MMA Fighting presents Timeline, Miocic vs. Cormier. September 25th, 2009, Strike Force Challengers 3, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Daniel Cormier, at the age of 30, makes his professional debut live on Showtime against Gary Frazier. Cormier would go on to win by second round TKO. June 18th, 2011, Strike Force, Overeem vs. Verdum, Dallas, Texas. Now, 7-0 with six finishes, Cormier faces longtime veteran Jeff Monson as a reserve in the Strike Force Heavyweight Tournament. This is your eighth pro fight, and obviously he's been, I mean, he's fought 24 times since he last fought in the UFC. The guy is very active. Um, did you think that by the time you got to your eighth, seven pro fight, that you'd be fighting veterans like this? Is this the pace that you that you wanted to go at? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I actually was, um, I actually figured around this time, uh, my path has been very similar to Kane's. You know, we fought the same level of, of competition going forward. Obviously, he's in the UFC, so he's fought a little higher caliber guys. But we're doing the same thing. We've, we've gotten the opportunity because of the, uh, the, uh, the commitment that the organizations have made to us to actually build inside the organization. So Kane wasn't rushed. You know, he fought some fights leading up to before he fought Czech Congo, and I wasn't rushed. You know, I fought fights that were, were uh, good fights for me uh, until I got to Jeff, Jeff Monson. So, um, uh, I think at this point, I figured I'd be starting to try and make my mark in the sport. It's only been, it's less than two years still, you know. Cormier wins by a decision. Very dominant performance by you, Daniel, and it seems as though you're happy with it, right? Very happy, yeah. Uh, uh, my coach just told me I executed the game plan of perfection, uh, standing, movement, uh, not going to the ground with him and giving him any advantages. And uh, if my coaches are happy with it, I'm happy with it. Interesting for an Olympic wrestler to to want no business going to the ground with this guy. You wanted, you just didn't want it. Why? But why did you not even want to try to dominate him there? Uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not a pissing contest. You know what I'm saying? So uh, why give him any any chance? We thought that I had the advantage in the stand up. Like I said, I've trained with some of the best fighters in the world on a daily basis. So I think I've grown and um, my my uh, abilities have grown. So I'm willing to fight anywhere. September 10th, 2011. Strike Force, Barnett versus Hartanov. After an injury forces Overeem out of the heavyweight tournament, DC steps in to face his toughest competition by far, Antonio Bigfoot Silva, who had just recently defeated Fedor. In reality, you know, that could be a detriment. You know, he's so big that he's, he's actually kind of slow. You know, so I think I'll be able to move around him pretty good. Uh, set up angles and I'll be able to take him down. You know, I've, I've got a uh, higher wrestling pedigree than he does and and um, I think I'll be able to use it to take him down. And uh, Bigfoot Silva will, if he gets on top of you, he beats the out of you. Like he literally takes his hands, he takes his hands together, he puts them together like a big old club and he starts throwing two hands down on your face. He grabs you by the neck in this move they call a rape choke and he beat, he just literally beat, try to, tries to beat you through the bottom of the canvas. But um, there's just no, there's, there's no chance, you know, I, I'm not going on the bottom, you know, there, there's just no way for him to actually take me down. So that's going to present problems for him. Daniel Cormier wins by devastating KO. And I thought it was going to be a long, drawn out battle because that's how you, that's how you make yourself train. You know, if you train for a knockout or some submission, you kind of cheat yourself in the gym. So uh, we train for a long three-round war, and that's why I was telling people I'd find one in the decision because I've trained hard enough to go uh, 15 minutes in a tough fight. But um, when you train that hard and something like this happens, it's just icing on the cake, you know? Your striking looks so impressive. You were very calm, and you were also very patient. Even when you rocked him and, and, and you knocked him down, you didn't get too excited. You actually told him to get up, which was weird for a wrestler like yourself to tell a guy like him to get up. Why did you feel the need to, to be so patient and not try to go for the kill so early? You know, a lot of guys that, that are relatively inexperienced like me, they, they rush, and then they get tired, and then they find themselves in bad situations. So uh, my deal was uh, I'm listening to my coaches all the time. You know, I can hear Bob when I'm fighting the whole time, and he's like, get him up, don't go into his guard because when guys are really good at jiu-jitsu you jump in that guard it's kind of hard to get big shots off him so off on him so it's hard to finish him so he's like get him up and then after I hit him with another left hook and he kind of rocked again so I was like well he's still hurt and I can hear him yelling he's still hurt he's still hurt so it was just a thing that um, I listen to my coaches man I, I, I'm actually honestly I don't know what's going on out there like I really don't like I'm just really listening to my coaches all the time what they're yelling I'm listening to October 8th 2011 UFC 136, Edgar versus Maynard 3, Houston, Texas. 
Stipe Miocic debuts in the UFC against Joey Beltran. Miocic wins by unanimous decision. May 19th, 2012. Strike Force Barnett versus Cormier. San Jose, California. Daniel Cormier is set to face Josh, the War Master Barnett, in the finals of the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Do you feel like an underdog in the fight? I should, yeah, I do. Honestly, uh, Josh was a UFC champion. Um, he's done a ton of things. He's beaten a lot of guys. I mean, Scott just listed him, and I, I really had no idea. I didn't know he beat that many guys, but I've beaten quite a few of those guys too. And and I could actually, I probably could do pretty well against a lot of the other ones. So. Um, I take it in stride. I should be the underdog because of his experience and his, his accomplishments, but um, I'll be ready to go. Cormier dominates Barnett in a 25-minute battle. You know, for all the negative things that have happened in my life and, and me getting knocked down and having to get back up, I, I think it all prepared me for this, made me a stronger person. Um, and just, you know, everything's kind of turning around. Not only is... Is, is my career going going well, but, but I've got two young kids, I've got a great girlfriend, and my family life is perfect. My, my mom and them are here. I mean, it's, uh, it's just everything is on the up and up right now. I mean, all the negative, you know, losing my daughter, uh, my dad getting killed, and, 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 and you know, uh, it goes on and on, you know. My teammate dying in a plane crash, or my, my roommate. Um, all that stuff just prepared me, you know, for, for, the, for, the, for the good good times. Because no matter how bad things get, um, eventually, you know, the, the, the sun is going to shine. And, and if you just keep trying to live life the right way and try to just, like, pursue your dreams and goals, eventually it'll turn around and, and, and good things happen to, to decent people. I'm not saying I'm a good person or anything, but for a person that stays set on his goals, uh, good things seem to happen. So we've all had our trials, so... I mean, everybody deals with adversity. It's just how you bounce back from it. After a quick knockout of the night performance in Nebraska over Philip DeFries, Miocic returns to face heavyweight prospect Shane Del Rosario. And they offered you Shane Del Rosario. He's making his UFC debut coming over from Strike Force. How much did you know about him when you got the call? Oh, I knew he was. You know, I knew he was a, he's a good fighter in Strike Force, great fighter in Strike Force. And, uh, you know, when I, when I got the phone call, you know, didn't hesitate and took that fight. I asked him on Monday uh, if he knew you, what his reaction was when he got the call. He said he didn't know you, he had to Google you to find out about you. Does that surprise you? Yeah, I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm still a little guy, you know, working my way up. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise you? Oh, no, I'm, you know, I just give him a couple more, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, big names. Keep fighting, keep getting better, and keep winning. Miocic wins a TKO in the second round. You're such a humble fighter, you're such a humble guy. How do you remain humble now? You're an undefeated UFC heavyweight, you've won 3-0 inside the octagon. Uh, you know, I have good coaches, you know, good teammates, good friends and family, you know, I just, just have good people around me. September 29th, 2012. UFC on Fuel TV 5, Struve versus Miocic, Nottingham, England. After a 3-0 start in the UFC, Miocic is booked in his first main event against Stefan Struve. Miocic goes on to lose by second round TKO, but takes home fight of the night honors. June 15th, 2013, UFC 161, Evans versus Henderson, Winnipeg, Canada. Miocic makes his return to the cage as the co-main event against Roy Nelson. You're coming off a loss, first loss of your career. How does that change, you know, the way fight week feels for you, your mindset, you know, how you approach this fight? I think I approach every fight the same. You know, just if you're going to win. You know, I, of course, last fight didn't go the way I wanted it to, but that's why I'm here and that's why I took the fight. You know, I don't know if you know about this, but there's some kind of behind-the-scenes drama with Roy Nelson going into this fight. Last fight on his UFC contract, if he wins, he obviously has a lot of momentum going into free agency. If he loses, all that momentum is gone. Do you like being that kind of spoiler? Do you like ruining those plans for him? I'm just worried about myself, that's all. You know. Did you even know about that situation? You know, him and Dana White have had their their oh, issues. A little bit about it, yeah, but I mean, I'd be kind of the hitman, take him out. <laughs> no, I'm uh, worried about myself here. I gotta win that, we're gonna the final Saturday, so. Miocic defeats Nelson in a dominant, unanimous decision. Was there any point in the fight where you thought maybe you know you're in trouble, you had to regroup, or did you feel like you were in control the entire 15 minutes? I felt like I was in control. You know, I was against the cage, I clinched him, he couldn't move me. So. Third round. Did you just want to get the win at that point? Because you were hearing some boos. Did that bother you? No, I was. I'm, I'm, 
I, I knew he was gonna go for kill. You know, he was gonna try to take my head off. You know, I was up two rounds and none. What would you do? I would sit there and play it smart. You know, I was still trying to hit him. I was still, I think I fucking rocked him a couple times in that third round. But whatever, you know, I got the win. That's all I care about. You know, biggest athletic achievement of your career tonight? Oh yeah, of course, man. You've had some big ones, but this is yeah, big. Come on, man. Go man, man. Winnipeg first time. Let's go. This is awesome. Don't get better than this. Miocic goes on to win his next two bouts in the UFC in Chicago for UFC on Fox 10, Henderson versus Thompson against Gabriel Gonzaga by unanimous decision. And in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Miocic knocks out Fabio Maldonado in the main event at Tough Brazil. April 2013, UFC on Fox 7, Henderson versus Melendez, San Jose, California. Daniel Cormier's first match in the UFC is against former UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir. It's not, I don't mind trash talk, whatever, but it's like, it's kind of that, the way he does it, it's really like, kind of condescending, you know, like he kind of looks down on you, it's like, I, I don't I don't quite understand that, you know, I don't understand, uh, you know, so he's smug? Very smug, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's very smug, I mean, you know that from, 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 uh, I knew that before I even started fighting, you know, you could watch him versus Brock Lesnar, you know, and you could tell that he was actually one of those guys, but, um, Again, I, as I've said, it won't matter. You know, I can go out there on, on, sun, on Saturday and take him out. And on his next fight, he's going to be doing the same thing to the next guy. So that's just him. But, you know, I intend on going out there, taking him out. And, you know, he's like the guy in high school. You know, it's like, oh, man, here comes Frank. Right? <laughs> Cormier grinds his way to a dominant decision victory. He remains undefeated. You know what, man? I've, uh, <clears throat> I've had a very long athletic career. And I've competed at the highest levels of all my sports. And, um, you know, I always kind of laughed at Dana when he said, you know, there's jitters and there's nerves that come along with this. And I was like, you know, my career has prepared me for this. There's no chance that I'm. But, man, I was nervous today. Like, I felt so nervous. It's like it's almost like you want it so bad and you want to do so well. And then it's like you just kind of, you know, I, I you know, kind of lay an egg a little bit. And I didn't fight the fight I wanted to. Uh, I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I didn't fight the fight I wanted to. And, and you know what? More than anything, I, I felt tired. And I've never gotten tired. I usually I'm in a fight and I feel great and I can go long, you know. And in this fight, I, for some reason, I was very tired and I think it was my nerves. I was very nervous in the back. I felt like my legs were kind of weird. But, you know, I went in there and I fought and, and I fought as well as I could. Um, wasn't ideal. But, you know, if you can feel bad and, and be the guy that's two-time champion, across the board, you know, there's got to be some positive in that. February 22nd, 2014, UFC 170, Rousey versus McMahon, Las Vegas, Nevada. Daniel Cormier makes his light heavyweight debut against late replacement Patrick Cummins as the co-main event. Yeah. What about when they came up with the name Patrick Cummins? I mean, was there any hesitance? Because in a lot of ways, man, this seems kind of like a, a no-win situation for you. Yeah, no hesitancy for me, man. I, I'm a competitor. I want to compete. If there's an opportunity to compete at something, I'm there. Just tell me when. You know, you want to play some Madden? You want to play NCAA football? <laughs> tell me where, and I'll go meet you there. And I'll tell you one thing, I'll beat you, and I'll be cheating to beat you, too, because I'm trying to win. So I'm a competitor, man. You know, I, any opportunity I get to compete, plus, you know, I wrestled my entire life. You know, I, some, you don't know who you're wrestling the next round. So uh, for me, it's an opportunity to compete. That's what I'm here to do. DC easily wins by TKO against the overmatched and inexperienced Cummins in the first. Well, it's, it's like every time I fight now uh, in the octagon, I feel more comfortable. And I'm, I'm actually scaring myself because there's, I went from being very nervous against Mir to like now there's no nerves whatsoever. Against Nelson, against uh, Cummins, there's really no nerves. Uh, the thing I took, took from the fight more than anything was uh, that my power actually carries me a lot further than it did in heavyweight. Because the same uppercut I hurt Patrick with the very first time. I landed against Frank Mir maybe 15 times. I did it to Roy Nelson. I did it against Josh Barnett. And those guys kind of just ate him. And uh, it visibly affected him uh, tonight. So um, more than anything he did, I think it was, I think my power is going to carry me a lot further in this division because I'm not as small compared to the guys that I'm fighting. May 24th, 2014. UFC 173. Barrow versus Dillashaw. Las Vegas, Nevada. Cormier makes a quick turnaround, this time against veteran Dan Henderson. Yeah, I believe I'm going to be the champion. You know, I believe with every fiber of my being that I'm going to be the champion. It's my, it, it's like, 
It's what I was supposed, I'm supposed to be the champion. I believe it. Do I believe I'm going to walk through these guys? No. Do I believe that I can beat every one of them? Yes. You know, I mean, they're tough guys, but I, I can beat Alexander Gustafson. I can beat John Jones. I'm going to beat Dan Henderson. That's just what I'm supposed to do. DC handily defeats Henderson by submission in round three. You know, a lot of people, of course, are saying, well, Hendo was not nearly as big as you in size. It was a big difference in the fight. You said in the cage you thought you could do that to John Jones. Uh, why, why do you believe you could, and do you feel like if you got the fight that you're ready to beat him now? Well, I mean, you know, it's like styles make fights, man. I mean, I was going to fight Rashad Evans in February, and I've said on record, I think in the division, I think Rashad Evans is a tougher fight for me because of his, of his ability to wrestle and, and I've seen Rashad compete since 2000 when we were in college. Um, for Jones, I mean, it's, it's a, that's a tough hill to climb, man. There's no just beating John Jones. You know, I'd, I'd have to have my best performance, and um, knowing that I was fighting for the UFC title, I would train as though I need to have my best performance. So I just think that Styles make fights, and him, and, you know, I match up well with him. You know, we haven't really seen him on his back for an extended period of time, but if I get on top of him, I think I can hold him down and, and get some offense off. December 13th, 2014, UFC on Fox 13, Dos Santos versus Miocic, Phoenix, Arizona. You know, I gotta say something to you here. You know, I've talked to you before, we've done interviews, Winnipeg, whatnot, and you don't seem to love doing media. And then I see you on Twitter, and you're like the most prolific Twitter tweeter out there. I mean, you're nonstop. I'm like, I'm like, was it Ricky Bobby? So it's I'm like, what do I do with my hands? What do I, what do I do with these things? You know, I'm, I'm terrible at interviews. So I'm wondering, are you the one actually tweeting? I'm actually going to go out there and, and oh, yeah. call you out and wonder if you're the one tweeting. Of course. This is prolific stuff that you're doing. You're nonstop. It's, it's easy to write stuff. I just when I have a camera on my face, it's terrible. Like I get, if you, if you talk to my coaches, if I'm, I'm don't look at the camera. Just look right here. <laughs> you put me in the spot. No, man. No, I, uh, yeah, man. I just, I don't know. With cameras on my face, I have a hard time, and I'm like, uh, you know, and I get real, I get real shy. I don't know what it is. I just, I'm terrible at it. You should see me on the news when I go on the news. I'm terrible. Like, I'm like, do you want to get better? I try. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've gotten, I've gotten better. I feel like the Twitter has really brought out your personality, though. I mean, you've really come. I'm trying. I have a good personality. I do. That's it's why unbelievable. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 I want, I want to see more of it on camera because there, <laughs> there he is. That's the guy I'm talking about. In a fight of the night performance, Dos Santos wins a very close decision. The loss snaps Miocic's three-fight winning streak. Obviously, you disagree with the decision. Can you talk to us a little bit about about? What you thought of the scoring, obviously? Um, yeah, I, I mean, like Dana said, I slowed down a little bit, especially third, beginning of fourth, you know, um, I thought I needed more. I mean, the fourth, fifth rounds, you know, I mean, at least thought I won two of those rounds for sure. Maybe somewhat decently close, but apparently not. Um, like you say, don't let it go to the judges. And uh, you know what? He was a better man than that, and he got his hand raised, so nothing I can do about it. January 3rd, 2015. UFC 182, Jones versus Cormier. Las Vegas, Nevada. Originally slated for UFC 178, but delayed due to injuries, the undefeated Daniel Cormier is set to face John Jones. Do you, do you dislike John Jones as a person? Like, does he, does the, 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 the sight and the thought of him, the idea of him beating you in a competition, giving you your first loss, th does that kill you inside? Like, do, do you really dislike this person? Uh, because that's the way this fight has been built. Bad blood, right? Mm -hmm. The brawl, all that stuff. But is that accurate? My whole thing with, with John and I is this. When, when I pushed Patrick Cummins, I shoved him away from me. I didn't go high up on his shoulders or anything because, you know, I pushed him off. Like, get away from me. You know, I'm sorry. first time I got close to him. Uh, with John Jones, it's like I pushed him here and it, it, it was more malicious. It was a very, the push was more malicious because of the, the ill will and the hard feelings I have towards him. And his response showed how he feels towards me. So it doesn't matter what he says. He could say, well, it's not that big a deal. I think it's petty. It's a, that's not true. That, that's not true. You don't go and fight in that way, in that situation, especially a guy that's so guarded if you don't have real bad feelings towards someone. So yeah, I believe 100% uh, he, uh, he, he dislikes me, I dislike him, you know. Uh, but more than anything, I, the idea that he could beat me at something drives me insane. Hmm. I do not want to let that happen. Not only because of the personal stuff, but competitively, I don't want to go and live my life knowing that he's better than me at this sport that we both are doing right now. Because when we look back on the careers, 
first thing we chose was wrestling. I was better. I made it to the top of that sport. I went as far as I could go without being an Olympic champion. He didn't, so I was better in that. And if he's better than me in MMA, I don't know if I could deal with that. You know, it'd be very, very difficult for me to rebuild from that. John Jones retains his title by decision. Uh, it's very difficult. You know, um, I've worked so hard to, to try and become a, a champion at the highest levels for a really long time. And, you know, it hasn't really worked out for me. You know, um, this one's tough. You know, I truly believe that I can get the job done. I thought I could get the job done. And as we were fighting, you know, it, it still felt pretty good. And, and, and then, uh, you know, I can't say enough about uh, his, 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 uh, his mentality inside of that octagon. I've shared that cage with some very, very strong men and some very big men, uh, heroes, superheroes. And, and uh, I can't say enough about his, his uh, grit and his determination because I pushed him, you know, I pushed him. And I, I went after him, and I, I fought him, and he did, he did a great job, but difficult. Um, but you know, man, I've had to rebuild myself a number of times, like people can't even imagine. And uh, this is no different. This is not going. This is not going to ruin me. You know, one way or the other, I'm going to stand across the cage from that man again, and uh, I'll believe just as I did tonight. And I'll take the fight to him again, I guess. Thank you for being so candid. And last, how do you feel? <laughs> May 10th, 2015, UFC Fight Night 65, Miocic versus Hunt, Adelaide, Australia. Miocic headlines yet another UFC card, this time in South Australia against Mark Hunt. In what would be a historic night, Miocic lands a total of 361 strikes, the most of any fighter in UFC history. Miocic officially wins by TKO midway in the final round. May 2015, UFC 187, Daniel Cormier versus Anthony Johnson, Las Vegas, Nevada. Originally booked as Jones versus Johnson for the light heavyweight title, Jones was stripped of his championship after a hit-and-run incident in Albuquerque, New Mexico, less than a month out of the fight. Cormier, who was scheduled to face Ryan Bader at a separate event, was rebooked to face Anthony Johnson in the main event for the 205-pound title. Yeah, I was here five months ago, man, and, and, and doing this dance, this same exact dance. Uh, it feels good. But specifically, this is where the post-fight press conference happened. Yes. This is where you were on that dais, essentially crying in front of the world, your head down, John Jones was rubbing it in your face, and now here we are, back in the same place five months later. It's somewhat surreal, right? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable that I've always said, man, if you put good energy out into the world, you do the right thing, good things happen for you, and that's exactly what happened to me. You know, I, I do things right, man. I train hard. I love my family. I love my fiance. I take care of my mom and dad. I love my teammates, and I put good energy out into the world. And good things have been happening for me because of that. After getting dropped by Johnson in the opening round, Cormier is able to recover and defeats Johnson by submission in the third round. If I would have stood in front of Anthony, this thing would be sitting on the opposite side of the, this, this, this press conference right now. He hit me so hard, and I was like, man, not only does this guy hit hard, he's very fast. So when he hit me, I fell, and I... I turned around and behind me, I saw him coming chasing me. I was like, holy shit, he's coming after me. So I tried to grab him, but then he just started punching me again. And then eventually I was able to grab him and kind of get my, my head back about me. I wasn't like completely out, but I was like, I, I did get stunned. That's the first time I've ever been knocked down in practice, competition, anything. I've, I mean, I fell in the moment I rolled, because I'm, I'm kind of chubby, you know, so you roll when you fall. Uh, I looked behind me and there was Anthony. He was like coming and I was like, holy cow, he's right behind me. I hope that's your game plan next time, bro. Please. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just stand there. Hell no, nah, I ain't standing in front of you. Are you lie, crazy? I can't lie. He, he wrestled the hell out of me tonight. So um, I wasn't trying to take your, your limelight right now, bro. He hit me one time and look at my face. He hit me on the side of the face one time. I was like, holy cow. He kicked me in the face a couple times too. It sucked. 
Yeah, your head hurt my foot. <laughs> October 3rd, 2015. Cormier versus Gustafson. Houston, Texas. Despite coming off a first-round knockout at the hands of Anthony Johnson, Alexander Gustafson is booked to face Cormier for his first title defense. Can you make the case that he's one of the more overrated fighters in the UFC because of the fact that people keep bringing up a loss as his greatest accomplishment? You know, man, I, I honestly, if I'm being honest, I do. You know, I, I do think he's very dangerous. Like, make no mistake about it. I respect Gustafson for what he can do. But the stature in which he is held, it doesn't really equate to what he's done inside of the octagon. That's just the truth. Uh, but I do respect him. But, yeah, I, I think for what he's done, I haven't seen many people in UFC history held in such high regard for actually losing a fight. In a fight of their performance from both fighters, Cormier narrowly defeats Gustafsson by decision. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty beat up, actually. As you would expect, I kind of messed my foot up. I think, I think my foot may be broken. He checked the kick, and it's like very swollen and kind of all lumped up. So, But I feel pretty beat up. This is the worst that I've ever been beat. Guy, Gus, yeah, Gustafson's a stud, man. Uh, he's, he's, he's a good fighter. These are the ones that you dream about when you start doing this. And you don't dream about them as you want to be involved. You want to be involved, and you want to win them. And uh, I was tired in the fifth round, but I just kept punching and punching and punching and punching. I always take from my teammates, you know, and I watched Luke Rockhold beat Jacare as a baby in this sport, and he was exhausted, and he just kept punching. And even though things weren't landing with power, he just kept working, and he won a decision. I watched Kane get his belt back from Junior Dos Santos. In between rounds, he thought he was going to faint, but he kept punching, and he kept punching, and he kept punching, and he got his belt back. So I take from my teammates, and you watch them perform at this level, and all you do is try to, to try to model yourself after them. January 2nd, 2016, UFC 195, Lawler versus Condit, Las Vegas, Nevada. Back on a win streak, Miocic is set to face former champion Andre Arlovsky in the pay-per-view co-main event. This is sort of a dream matchup for you because of his striking. I feel like you guys are kind of cut from the same cloth. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, dream, I don't know, I don't know if anyone thinks anything's dream getting punched in the face, but uh, in general, uh, no, yeah, I think it's going to be a great matchup between both of us, but, uh, you know, I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm a better striker and I think I'm faster and I have you know, better cardio, so we'll, we'll see, you know. He's, he's going to bring his A game too, so. Miocic quickly dispenses the Belarusian by knockout in under a minute of round one. The knockout earns Stipe an extra 50000 for performance of the night. Uh, I, I know you can't go be a different person, but have, have you made any kind of a decision that, that you want to try to be more outspoken? Was this? I guess, I don't know. I think I'm a funny guy. I mean, my friends think I'm funny. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm a fireman. I mean, you know, I like fighting. It's fun. May 14th, 2016, UFC 198, Verdum versus Miocic, Curitiba, Brazil. After 10 fights in the UFC, going 8-2 and two, and on a two-fight win streak, Miocic gets his shot at gold against the champion. Miocic wins in what MMAfighting.com voted knockout of the year. Miocic becomes UFC heavyweight champion at 2 minutes and 47 seconds into round one. Uh, you know, I didn't believe I, I carried the weight. You know, I was going to go out there and do my best job. You know, Fabrice is a, a super tough guy. He's a champion for a reason. Um, you know, actually tonight on ESPN for 30 for 30, they had Believe Lynn. There was a, a documentary about how Cleveland sports did win on championships. So... I, just, I knew I had to put an end to it. You know, I had to put the, stop the curse for us, and uh, you know, it went well for me tonight. July 9th, 2016, UFC 200, Tate versus Nunes, Las Vegas, Nevada. Cormier is set to rematch John Jones as the main event for UFC 200. But on Wednesday night of fight week, the UFC scheduled a last-second press conference to announce that John Jones had been flagged by USADA for a potential doping violation and therefore pulled from the main event. Thursday evening, the UFC announces that Anderson Silva will be filling in and facing Cormier in a non-title light heavyweight matchup. Cormier defeats Silva by decision. A lot of relief. You know, it was a very difficult week. Um, it was very high when I got here, seeing my face on the side of the T-Mobile Arena to the ultimate low of Wednesday when John was out of the fight. 
to starting to hear that Anderson may fight me and then not really knowing until like Friday morning, but still trying to make weight. You know, my, my body wasn't really reacting as I wanted it to anymore with the stress of everything. So uh, it was a long week, but right now I feel relieved, you know, because uh, Anderson did this on two days notice. The guy actually did it on two days and he went out there and fought as, as, well, as hard as he could, you know, so all respect to him. But reality is, um, if it would have been catastrophic if I would have lost tonight because I would still be the champion but have lost to a guy that probably would have went down the middleweight and challenged for the belt. So I did what I needed to do. September 10th, 2016, UFC 203, Miocic versus Overeem, Cleveland, Ohio. The UFC comes to Cleveland for the first time, and their hometown fighting hero, Stevie Miocic, is matched up against Alistair Overeem to defend his title for the first time. After getting dropped and surviving a submission attempt, Miocic recovers and defeats Overeem by knockout four minutes and 27 seconds into the first. Thank God it's over. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, he hit a lot harder than I thought. You know, he put me on my ass. Um, but, you know, I thought I was okay. You know, he put me down. You know, for a split second, I was like, oh. But then, you know, got me in that front line. I got out of it. I felt fine and then took over. Cuban people are crazy. That's why I live here. That's how we do it. We don't mess around. We wait till next week and then I go tailgating in the Browns game. You're going to see a lot more fights. I'm not going to be in one of them, but, you know, we watch them. Uh, that's how we do it, man. You know, like, uh, like I said, I'd rather fight Brazil, man, because that was just, uh, you know, I got a little emotional in my head for, for a split second, you know, this is badass, you know, and then people were, you know, just, you know, just trying to mentally keep them out, but uh, it, it was, uh, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. April 8th, 2017, UFC 210, Cormier versus Johnson 2, Buffalo, New York. Anthony Johnson is set to rematch champion Daniel Cormier for the UFC light heavyweight title at the Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York. So you're with Rumble a lot. You have to do all this media. I mean, the second go around here, as far as the fight is concerned, second go around in the last four months. Are you getting tired of this man being around you? It doesn't bother me. You know, we're during the media, we're together. But outside of that, we don't, I mean, obviously, we don't see each other. Yeah. We don't hang out. So it's like short pockets of time. It feels like you big brother him though. I see some pictures you're like, oh, I made him stand during this interview. You try to say, do you, do you feel like you are getting in his head? He says no, but do you feel like you are? I'm not trying to get in his head. He just knows. If there's a big brother, little brother situation, he knows. He recognizes it. Anthony Johnson knows. He knows who's the boss in this situation. I'll show him on Saturday. Look, Anthony Johnson's a tough guy. He's a guy that has a lot of punch and power, a guy that's very fast. But I was watching this, the first fight again, and uh, Anthony Johnson was ready for me to finish him in the second round. The time just ran out. He tried to roll over to his stomach, but I wouldn't let him. Watch it. When I cut him, he tried to roll to his belly and give me his back to choke him out, but I wouldn't let him. I cross-faced him, cross him back down, and I elbowed him some more. Time ran out. Third round, he did the same thing. Threw the punches, gave it one last shot to knock me out, and when he realized it wasn't happening, turned over, gave me his back, and let me choke him. He knows. He knows how this goes. Cormier well, seems a little bit out of sorts, but he is about to step on the scale at officially 10.57. Here we go. Cormier weighs in at 206.2 pounds. Cormier weighs 206.2 pounds. That is not good enough for this to be a light heavyweight title fight. Cormier weighs in at 206.2 pounds. A distraught Daniel Cormier fails to make weight. Here comes Pearl Gonzalez, but everyone's still reeling. With two minutes to go, Daniel Cormier has weighed in at 206.2 pounds. He had to weigh in at 205 for this to be a light heavyweight title fight. And oh, by the way, there's two minutes to go, and there is no sign of Rumble Johnson. I mean, you cannot script this stuff. A shocking turn of events here in Buffalo. 
Daniel Cormier weighs in at 206.2 pounds. The light heavyweight champion has officially missed weight. And now at 10.59, we are told that Rumble Johnson is in the building. The rule has always been you gotta make weight within the two hour window. And here we are, it is 10.59 and still no sign of Rumble Johnson. I mean, you cannot script this kind of drama. Unbelievable turn of events for Rumble Johnson for the UFC for Daniel Cormier and Cormier is back now. And now Daniel Cormier is back. Wow. And now Daniel Cormier is back and made weight. How did that happen? Unbelievable. An unbelievable turn of events here in Buffalo. Daniel Cormier returned two minutes later and made weight. I don't believe this. I do not believe what I have just seen. Daniel Cormier has made weight. And now here's Rumble Johnson at 11 a.m. Eastern time. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Here's Rumble Johnson weighing in, sweating. 203.8 for Rumble Johnson. You cannot script this. This is an unbelievable turn of events. Just when you thought you have seen it all here at the official weigh-ins. Daniel Cormier showed up weighing 206.2 pounds. Missed weight, distraught, his head down. Walks out, comes back two minutes later and makes weight. And then at the buzzer, literally at the buzzer, Daniel Cormier and Rumble Johnson have made weight. This is unbelievable. Shocking, dizzying. How did this happen? And just like that, everyone has made weight. DC defends his belt by defeating Anthony Johnson once again by rear naked choke, this time in the second round. I trained for a submission. I. We trained for a improved version of Anthony Johnson, a guy that was gonna be able to go longer, harder. Uh, we thought that eventually we could break him down, but um, uh, it happened a little bit faster than uh, I anticipated. So did you see an improved version of him then, or did you see a version that, that was a, a lesser version than you saw the first time? I don't know, it was a different fight. It was a completely different fight because the first time I was actually engaging in the wrestling, whereas this time he was the one kind of wrestling me, which was a big surprise. Um, so even in the first round, you know, we would have preferred not to take the head kick, but if you got a guy that's as big and explosive as Anthony and he is going to engage you on your terms, you kind of concede one round and hope that it's like a boxer with body punches. You know, you're just investing in the later rounds. So he conceded the first round, and in the second round when he did the same thing, I could feel he wasn't as strong, and uh, eventually I felt I was going to get him. This fight was a little bit different for you, I'm going to imagine, because of the, the, the drama with the weight cut, and then the drama with, with John Jones and all the, the stuff that was going on with that. Uh, how did you kind of work through that, uh, especially today, leading up to the fight? Just trying to be professional, you know I mean? This is what I do for a living, you know, I try to, I got to eliminate those distractions, you know, I mean, something happens in the moment, it happens in the moment, you know, I, I didn't necessarily want to see Jones before the fight, I had kind of put it in my mind that I was going to try not to see him, but um, when I go to hug Luke, he was sitting right next to him, so I ended up seeing him, which was kind of odd, but None of this stuff affects me, man. When I'm in the octagon, I have to pay attention to what's going on in front of me. And that was Anthony Johnson. We have seen time and time again what happens to you when you make a mistake against Anthony. And I just did not make that one costly mistake. The head kick hurt. But um, 
I didn't make the ultimate mistake to get the fight finished. May 13th, 2017, UFC 211, Miocic versus Dos Santos 2, Dallas, Texas. The champion Miocic is set to even the score with the challenger, Junior Dos Santos, as the main event in Dallas, Texas at UFC 211. Here's the other thing I have to talk to you about. The last time we spoke, we made a little bit of news. You were unhappy. I never heard you like this before, right? You said you are coming. Are you, you make me feel like I'm like this hormonal. No, but right you. Now. You tell me <laughs> there's like, a lot of emotion. You want me to hear that? You hear you're the most obnoxious person of all time. That you're mad about this. Like, what, what do you want me to do? Listen, you're somewhat stoic. So anytime you give us an inch, yeah. it's a big deal. You take it like 30 miles. Well, it's a big deal. You're the heavy. You're the baddest man on the planet, right? Yeah. You were unhappy. You said that they they mistook your kind. How, how do you feel now? How are things? I'm funny, aren't I? Yeah. All right, we're good. But are you under duress a little bit? Like, do you want to clear up things afterwards? It's all good. We're good. I'm, I'm the next nice fight. <laughs> now we're back to one word answer. Miocic wins by first round knockout. I, I, I've worked my ass off to get where I'm at. You know, if it wasn't for my coaches, my wife, my family, my teammates, my friends, just everyone backing me up, my city, have my back, I won't be where I'm at. You know, it's a, it's a Midwest thing. You know, you know how it is. You, uh, Everyone has been talking all night about, you know, your second title defense. Third is the record. Uh, I know, you know, the heavyweight division has been so tough to maintain this title. But does that matter to you? I mean, does making history matter to you? Is that something that's important? Can you, you know, is that something, your place in history, is that important to you? No, I really don't care. I mean, if I keep winning, yeah, I'll break history, big deal. I'm just going to keep winning. I like winning. It's fun. I like being called champ, especially. July 29th, 2017, UFC 214. Cormier versus Jones 2, Anaheim, California. The light heavyweight champ is set to defend his belt against the former champion, John Jones. What I saw in John Jones was, he's a confident man, but he's putting on a little bit more than people will ever recognize until they're two inches from his face like I saw. He may be confident, but in those eyes I see more doubt than I've ever seen. And I believe there are a number of reasons for that. Do you truly believe that when he fought you the first time, he was on steroids? I do. You do. I do. Is it, is it a look thing, a physical thing, a feeling? Is it? What I'm makes not. you feel that? Yeah. So, physically, there were some differences, but also logically, there were differences. Um, medically, there were differences. Um, there were a lot of reasons as to why they point to him doing stuff like that. I mean, I've explained it time and time again, Ariel, a guy that will do cocaine a month before the big night, uh, before the biggest fight of his career yeah, yeah. at the time. Nuts. Even when he got caught with Rumble Johnson, there's a meme out there. It says the John Jones starter pack. It's a Magnum condom, some fucking Cheetos, <laughs> some Cheetos, a weed pipe, and like a Coca-Cola classic, right? This was three weeks before he fought Rumble. He even had openly admitted that he was driving home and he was a little bit hungover. So if you're going to do things to sabotage yourself, why wouldn't he do things to enhance himself? I, hey, that, that's just all for show. Look at you this can guy's show face. your six pack. Who looks like a junkie? You here can today? just show your six pack. That's fine. That's all Who for show. Who looks like a junkie here today? I look like a. You I'm look not, like I'm a not, crackhead hey. with a suit on. Was that? You look like a crackhead with a suit on. I could look like a crackhead with a suit on, but I've never been a crackhead like you, though. <laughs> so you could say I look like one, but I've never been one. I've never been one. Next question. Jones would knock out Cormier in the third round, but Jones would fail his drug test, and the result would be changed to a no contest. Cormier remains champion. January 20th, 2018, UFC 220, Miocic versus Nganu, Boston, Massachusetts. Miocic is set to defend his title against Francis Nganu in the main event in Boston, Massachusetts. Also on this card, Daniel Cormier is set to defend his light heavyweight title against Volkan Ozdemir. I appreciate each and every one of you coming out here. We all know what happened to me last fight. I've got to build myself back up and I'm gonna make a statement on Saturday night. <laughs> Vulcan Ozdemir may be a good guy. He may be a good fighter. 
But I know one thing that Bo can't do, and that's be Daniel Cormier. And Saturday night, I get my hand raised again, and I go back into the winner's circle. Thank you, Boston. Thank you for having us. I appreciate you. After a wild first round, Miocic dominates Ngannou with his wrestling and superior cardio and cruises to a unanimous decision. Can you kind of reveal to us did it, how much did it mean to you? Or, or were, you, were you sincere in that it really, the record doesn't really mean, mean that much to you? Well, now it means something to me. You know, I beat the guy you know, that everyone thought I couldn't beat. So it made it much, that much sweeter. This guy's a phenom. He's one in a million, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? He lost. He lost to a Midwest boy that's 40 pounds lighter than him. And I'm the greatest heavyweight. I defended it three times. No one's ever done that. Right. You truly believe that you're the greatest of all time? Fuck yeah, I do. No one's ever defended it three times. I've done it. In, I've, I've, I had a role, a killer's role of fighters to get to it. I had a hard path to get to the title. And I had a hard path to defend the title. I had top dudes, you know? I had to fight Arlowski. And I had to fight Verdum in Brazil on 45,000 people. I mean, crazy. Next guy, Overeem, killer, K1 champ. Hits like a ton of bricks. Next guy, JDS, who I lost to. I got, I got a guy that's a phenom. Next, I mean, I mean, nothing's ever easy. I know it's funny ain't easy, but I never had an easy road. Everything was hard. After withstanding an early onslaught, Cormier would defeat Ozdemir by a TKO in the second round. Do you appreciate this a little more um, after what happened a couple of months ago? You know, I do. I've always appreciated it. I'm appreci I, I appreciate it every year, you know, like when I was 30 and 31 years old, maybe not so much. But as I start to get closer and closer to the end, I do appreciate it. And I appreciate it from trying to build back from a loss and trying to feel like I had some success in the job that I do. You know, I, I love to fight. I love to compete. And I was able to get a win tonight. You know, that was that that last time I was in a hospital. Right? When the press conference was going on, I was at the hospital. So, if not for anything else, to be able to look at my mom and not see tears in her eyes, and look at my wife and not see a look of confusion, or wake up on Sunday morning and hear my son who came to the fight for the first time. You know, the whole Jones thing, it sucked. I lost the fight and I got beat. I got my ass kicked. And I cried in the octagon. I cried before I went to bed. But you know what I cried the most is when I, when Sunday morning I'm laying on the couch next and my kids are in bed with their mom and my boy rolls over and he taps his mom because every time he'd never go to the fights, he wanted to know if his dad won. And you know what I heard at 7.30 in the morning in Anaheim? He tapped his mom and he goes, mom, did dad win? And uh, she said, no, pop, he didn't win this time. And uh, I was laying there, I could hear him. So I got my back to him and I'm crying. And uh, not long after, I feel like my boy behind me hugging me, you know. That was the hurtful thing. So for him to get to experience the other side of it is big for me. And my daughter and my family. It's all family to me. So I appreciate this. But I appreciate them being able to smile tonight instead of shedding tears. July 7th, 2018, UFC 226. Miocic versus Cormier. Las Vegas, Nevada. Daniel Cormier will be moving back to heavyweight to challenge Stipe Miocic for his title as the main event for UFC 226 at the T-Mobile Arena. <laughs>